Okay. And a question about our lasers being 10 centimeters apart. Um, they're set parallel to one another, so it doesn't matter how far away you are. Uh, you could be right in front of them or super far away, and they should still show up 10 centimeters apart. So that gives us a good, good gauge. Um, somebody's asking about the ripples on the bottom surface here. Anybody have some insight into those? Yeah, they seem to be oriented uh, parallel to the contour, or parallel to the, um, or I guess perpendicular to the slope direction. So there must be some water movement from upslope to downslope. It's very gentle here, so it's hard to see the slope, but uh, the uh, orientation of the vehicle right now is um, southwest. pointing, pointing kind of west, southwest. So the the um, slope is going right to left downhill, and that's kind of how we see the sand ripples oriented. So I'd say there's some general water flow in that direction and causing these ripple marks. Dan, you said something about the symmetry of being related to waves, or? Yeah, there's some. Um, uh, on the last expedition, uh, our expedition leader was. Uh, internal waves, right? It, yeah. The yeah, we do. We get internal waves in the ocean that um, we're we're used to thinking of waves on the surface of the ocean, but there's waves in the middle of the ocean too. Which at was depth. a surprise to me. From different sort of density, water mass, sort of density driven current flow and, and uh, differences in different water masses. Yeah. We often see uh, really dense corals at sort of the interface of water masses, and we think that's one of the reasons those sort of internal waves helps deliver an extra amount of food to them. So. He was very interested in uh, getting close-ups of the of the current ripples and whether they were symmetrical or asymmetrical. So if they were in very layman's terms here. Um, Four zero meters bearing two five zero, please. If they were symmetrical, that indicated that the that there was wave action because it goes the current goes both ways. If they were asymmetrical, like a wave is coming in on the beach where they had kind of like a crest, then that would indicate that the current only went one way because the sand piled up on the backside. So we were always, that was the... Can we look at this? Right. It. That was the third time this mini Zeus has just taken off. All right. You power cycle it. Go ahead, Jeff. Zoom in there. Maybe a geoded sponge that's been sedimented pretty heavily. All right, I power cycled the uh, tilt. We'll see if it happens again. All right. That's great, thanks. Okay. Yeah, so when we were talking about the symmetry of the of the ripple, it's in cross section. So it's hard to kind of gauge how asymmetric these might be. But um, you can kind of see a steeper side and a more gentle side to them. And I would say that they're asymmetric. But it's hard to really measure that. Just a bit there, halfway maybe. It's like a stocked crinoid. Oh no, that's a crinoid growing on something else. Oh, Christ gorged. Maybe Metallogorgia. 
So stop him up there, Katachi. Let me catch up again. Bridge, this is Nav. Can we please hold position? What's that again, Ryan? The one we're looking at? Yeah. Uh, that's Iridogorgia. And these white primnoids are the fan corals we're seeing. One of the viewers is asking if the internal waves would be regularly spaced, like surface waves are, or are they more random? I think they're pretty evenly spaced, or they can be both. Uh, not all surface waves are evenly spaced. Yeah. These uh, umbrella-shaped corals are actually black corals, umbellopathies. Go for a tight zoom on that if you That's want. Interesting. Yeah, we don't know too much about. I don't know too much about the internal wave dynamics, but um, generally there's sort of a hydraulic gradient, and uh, depending on the water mass and what the height of that water mass is and how it varies with depth, uh, we'll push the internal wave in one direction or another, and I think that changes with time. Or season, maybe, or uh, dynamics of the Earth's rotation. And like Katachi said, I think the uh, surface waves are not particularly regular. Um, by the time they're breaking on the beach, you know, maybe they're all breaking in the same way, and it seems like they have a similar period. But um, out in the ocean, definitely, there's waves coming in different directions, different frequencies, kind of all the time. I was really surprised when they started talking about waves and we we're like 2,500 meters down. I'm like, oh, what are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lynette is a good, really good person to ask about this. Her master's project was on using the multi-beam to image the water column. So mm -hmm. she used oh. slices of multi-beam data to create like, um, like a 3D stack where you could see these waves and they even break like up on the surface. Really? Yeah. So I wonder if you can surf internal waves. Like, is <laughs> that possible? I wonder if any of the organisms are taking advantage of that. Oh, oh I yeah. bet they are. Yeah. For like larval dispersal. Free, or free motion. Yeah. All right, Katachi, you ready to build the world's first neutrally buoyant surfboard? <laughs> <laughs> you can take it down to whatever depth on scuba gear you want. You could do that with your uh, subsea mountain climbing, too. <laughs> you know, the whole underwater adventure park. <laughs> I'm going to be a rich man. <laughs> that does sound really fun. <laughs> you have to have some really good insurance, I think. Uh, are we good for another move, or you want to catch up to... Yeah, no, close enough. To I can zoom out. All right. Bridge, this okay. is Nav. Four zero meters, bearing 250, please. Well, you can imagine these huge water masses moving through the deep ocean and uh, these seamounts just stick up, right? And so picture the kind of, like you would in air, sort of the aerodynamics of a car moving. You'd get this kind of the same effect of the seamount sticking up in the, in the general flow of a water mass over it. And you would get different um, speeds and vectors of, of water flow over the seamount as the water mass moves through the ocean. Gen generally, have we been seeing greater current at the tops of these seamounts? More, more on the steeper slopes, I'd say. So, yeah, it's not. It's, it's certainly not the same as aerodynamics, but um, interesting. Yeah. I wonder uh, if there's a relationship that can be explained there. I have another question that came in. Uh, is the sub-bottom profiler such that we can see the sediment depth? Um, not at the moment, because it's on Argus sitting on deck. Okay. But uh, yeah, in theory. There's one on the ship, too. And it allows us to see a little bit into the, uh, into the bottom. 
Yeah, that would be a better one to look at sediment depth on the top of the seamount. The Argus one is uh, very high frequency, so give us an image of the uppermost couple meters. Do you know how that thing works, Dwight? I've never like, read the manual and had it explained to me, but I've never, it's never I'm not clicked. sure if it's a chirp or um, multiple frequency. Uh, it's one frequency. You, you asking about the ship one or the Argus no, the one? the Argus one. The Argus one, one definitely has two frequencies, a high and a low frequency. Yeah. Oh, okay. So does the sub bottom on the ship, the Knudsen. But I've never been able to get it like to tell me that, okay, the sediment is, you know, 10 centimeters deep. Or yeah, yeah, because I think it's tuned for the strongest reflection, which is off the seafloor, so we don't tune it to look below that generally. But we could, I suppose. I've tried, but I've not been, I'm not familiar with it enough. I've never had someone who knows how to use it. Yeah, you know, I think we originally purchased oh, that to the, do uh, some Argus uh, cam. archaeology. Wow. We, we wanted to be able to use the sub bottom oh. profiler over Jellyfish. a buried shipwreck. Oh, yeah. And um, we, it never really gave us the results that we wanted. And the engineers really loved it as an <laughs> altimeter on Argus. So we sort of turned it into that. But uh, I think originally we purchased it for shipwreck work. Originally it was on Herc, right? Yeah, yep, it was. And so, it, sorry, what was its historical purpose? Uh, to look at buried shipwrecks. So to try to understand how, how much of the timber were, were buried in the mud. Mm -hmm. To see if we could image anything below what we saw at the surface, you know? So did it ever see anything? or? Um, I think so. I'm trying to remember. This is going back some time now. Uh -huh. um, and we did test it, actually, in shallow water at a couple sites in Narragansett Bay, uh, so at a buried pier. Um, we thought we could see buried objects, but um, it just didn't really work that well for us. Looks like you've got some uh, hits about 20 meters out. Right on both of them. Been seeing that kind of feeding behavior again and again. These fish come down like a missile, get something. We've had a uh, sub bottom profiler skid on Robos and uh, one of the kids was doing his PhD in that whole black magic. I still don't get it. <laughs> like how the thing works? Uh, yeah, they could determine something with it. Just look like I never, it never. Bridge, this really is now clicked. Four zero meters bearing two five zero, please. They were trying to yeah image the depth of the. Sediment, how how the sediment changed through the range of, of depth that he, that he could see with his instrument. We have another question about uh, the difference between Argus and Atalanta. Essentially, they serve the same function. Atalanta is a little smaller. Atalanta's got one key advantage right now, which is that it has one working thruster to Argus's zero. <laughs> that is always a bonus. That is a big difference at the moment. Technodyne, if you're listening, please answer the phone. <laughs> <laughs> we need spare parts. Arm missing on that Bazingian? Yeah. What's that? It's an arm. There's Oh. Chomped on that right. star. Fiona, can you grab a photo of that? And another Thaurella from Noid on the right. I'll push in a little bit there for her photo, Jeff. So overall, that's yeah, good, thanks. Thank you. Got it? Great.
Yeah, we have been looking at some of the sub-bottom data over these seamounts, and Chris Kelly, our scientist ashore, has looked at it recently too. And um, the, the coarser sandy sediment or rubbly sediment doesn't allow penetration of the sonar signal as well as deep sea mud. So you get really nice sub-bottom structures um, over much muddier bottoms. And this sort of summit of the seamount here is a little sandier and uh, with all this rubble and rocks and whatnot. And so we really don't see very good penetration, unfortunately. So it's not the best tool for measuring sediment thickness here. There has been, um, the deep sea drilling program has uh, done coring on seamounts though. And um, I can't remember the results of some of that, but uh, they can certainly get thicknesses of the sediment deposit on top of the carbonate caps and on top of the volcanics underneath. Measure very accurately for one cored area, the can thicknesses you, uh, of all the stop layers. The ship there, Kitachi. Bridge, this is Nav. Please hold position. The chirp so bottom profiler on Nautilus is, I think, a three and a half and twelve kilohertz. So uh, that's pretty 15, high. Oh, 15. is it? Yeah. Is it fifteen? Yeah. Three and a half and fifteen. Yeah. Yeah. So the fifteen probably doesn't really show much of anything. I think the fifteen is good for just finding the bottom, and yeah. then the three and a half can penetrate a little bit further and potentially show you what's yep. further inside. But um, we zoom on this there's other types of sub-bottom profiling yeah, with right. uh, lower frequency systems like uh, oh, uh, boomers and sparkers and other types of chirp sonar a bit there, Jeff. that with the lower frequency system has better penetration coarser resolution but better penetration to get deeper range in the sub bottom interesting bamboo there ah sorry. what's happening I think getting come down yeah come down come down do I have you been on ships with seismic um, sonars yeah I, I've done a couple uh multi-channel and single-channel seismic surveys. Um, trying to think of the uh, air gun, yeah. air gun sound sources. Oh, man. So those are um, uh, in the hertz range, not kilohertz ranges. Um, I can't remember the exact frequency, but uh, big multi-channel, uh, high, you know, big powered air gun systems can uh, send sound miles deep into the Earth's crust. Wow. And those are just directly on the ships, or are they towed or something? They're towed. They're okay. like an array. Can you and still hear them? Yes. The? Okay. Yeah, they're loud. Yep. They're very restricted in uh, dealing That's with cool marine shot. mammals and how it affects marine mammals. But um, oil and gas, that's what they use for seismic exploration. Um, and uh, the U.S. Geological Survey does those sorts of surveys. You um, want to see the base of it, Ryan? Or you I have think we're all right, right. thanks. Okay. Like in the Arctic for extended continental There is a little research. yellow colony off to our right. Yeah, there we is. might want to take a peek at. Are there sensor array stations okay, studying the mid-ocean waves? Out. We'll look at the yellow one there. Oh, I don't know if I can answer that intelligently. I know there's like... Um, there's a program called the Argo floats. Um, mm -hmm. These floats that uh, profile the ocean, which just means they use like a buoyancy driven engine to either make themselves a little bit denser than water or a little bit less dense. Um, and that way they can sink to the bottom and then come back up. And they have these uh, conductivity, temperature, uh, pressure sensors on them. Um, and some of them might have some IMU or motion sensing capability. Um, and they have a little transceiver at the top so that every time they surface, they send the, um, their data uh, to a satellite. 
and there are hundreds of these around the world. Uh, zoom in there, Jeff. So uh, the, I think they're better for studying currents than waves, so I'm not sure. But I do know that um, internal yeah. waves is like a hot area of study. Nice. Oops. Stony coil here. Yeah, the Argo floats kind of move with the water masses, so uh, they don't stay stationary necessarily, but um, the ocean uh, observing, ocean observatories initiative, uh, looks like like the Pioneer Array that's no, south of Martha's maybe? Vineyard, um, What's measures that, right? internal waves, I believe, that, that um, what are you, originate sorry? from deep sorry water and rise up the slope and, sh and up onto the shelf. And so they're look interested in that sort of more coastal dynamics of water masses, mass movement, and then what it might mean for um, like fisheries and where the whales go to feed because you have these collisions of these different water masses on the shelf slope break. And uh, I think these observatories, they're basically moored instrument platforms, uh, can measure that dynamic pretty well. All right, that's a great look, thanks. So that's an analipsamia, a type of stony coral. Probably one of the contributors to the rubble we've been seeing all around. Huh. Yeah. Questions are rolling in. Uh, would it be possible to put side scan sonars on Argus? We, we have. Or Atalanta. We, uh, we do have side scanning sonar uh -huh. on Argus. Not um, anymore. Oh, we took it off? Yeah. It's well, finally been removed. Uh, yeah, it was used during Amelia. I know that. We have uh, some good ones on uh, Atlanta. Argus isn't the perfect arrangement for the side scan, I don't think, because it's sort of a wide body and it gives a pretty significant gap immediately below the vehicle. Mm -hmm. The more efficient side scan sonar platforms are AUVs that can go out and just collect tons of data. Another question that was sent in, can all crinoids swim? I don't know the answer to that. Good question. Are stalked crinoids stuck to their stalk? Yeah, I think yeah, so. Yeah, I think they are. So that would be an obvious exception to the swimming. But I don't know if all comatulid or sort of unstalked crinoids can swim or not. I feel like I haven't seen any baby crinoids. Like, they're always just like big. <laughs> yeah, Maybe we true, just don't actually. notice the little ones. <laughs> well, they grow really fast. <laughs> I've seen little tiny sea stars all over. Chris so Kelly is noting a group of crinoids that don't swim, the thalassometrids. The ones Trevor, that if you're still listening, it took me one hour and 50 minutes to figure out that you left the pen and tilt select booby trap. What happened? Uh, we leave little booby traps for each other, and today's was the pen and tilt select on, uh, on bubble. So mm. it's, been, it's been an hour and 50 minutes before I tried to pan or tilt. It's backwards. Uh, no, it just bubble doesn't. And until the controller is uh, 485 there. <laughs> All <laughs> but it did get me. Like, why is this thing not panning and tilting? What's happening? One of our viewers reports having seen videos of a stocked crinoid, uh, stocked crinoid crawling. Hmm. Yeah. Did 
a starburst view here. Paul, how's the uh, latest upgrade to the left arm doing? It's there. Yeah. You can see it. Well, I'll wait. Not going to happen. Try it. I see you're at a Gorgia here. Hey, Christopher, um, earlier you asked a question about uh, the eel-like shape of a lot of the fish we've been seeing. Yeah. And I, um, I don't think I gave a really good answer. So I asked my TA for fish, fish physiology, um, and he said that um, they're under immense pressure at depth. Wow. So a lot of the fish don't have well-defined musculature, and Huge it's a... Uh, bamboo coil. Sorry. They can't have like stiff tails and big red muscles to support that kind of, um, the energy. There's there's not enough food to support the energy demands of that kind of movement. So, huh. um, and elongation might also play a role in allowing the fish to travel farther, particularly where productivity can be like far and few between. Hmm. That's a great answer. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Katashi's TA. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Zach Skelton from Scripps. I remember nothing from that class. <laughs> yeah, that sinusoidal motion of like wiggling the tail back and forth probably is really efficient. Yeah. So you'll notice in um, environments that have a lot of stuff like shallow water reefs, or, or even deep water reefs, you'll find more fishes that look like angelfish that are great for maneuverability, but not so much for going, you know, forward or back efficiently. Those are more like tunas and whatnot. But at, at the deep sea, um, probably due to this pressure and lack of food, they just kind of become these like um, head with a tail kind of shape. I've been noticing that a lot of the fish don't swim forward in the way that you know, fishing your fish tank normally do. They'll, they'll be like vertical or swimming upside down or like gravity doesn't seem to matter to them as much or something. I think the currents are also not as strong here compared to pushing on the base there. Pelagic sure. environments. Well, and it could also just be that they're just drifting in the currents rather yeah. than actively swimming through them. Yeah, yeah. Like might face. You know, might not be a reason to fight it or something. Yeah, they're just using themselves as a sail, maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have a bunch of engineers talking about science, so take all this <laughs> with a grain of salt. Well, those of us in the front row who are not scientists. All right, that's great. Thanks. There's a vase sponge over here we're interested in taking a zoom on, too. Yeah, spotted it. You plug telid. Push in a bit there if you want to. Looks like its rock has come free. Interesting to see the bottom of one like this. Push in a bit more if you want. 
That's good, thanks. Okay, you can go tight on the bottom if you want. That falls in, is it? Way that far away? Yeah, you are. Well, you happy with that? Yep. Right. Okay. Thanks. A little cup coral in the background, too. How does Chris sneak away? So I don't even notice. <laughs> One second, it's Chris, and then it's you guys. I don't know how he sneaks away like that. Stealth. What were you saying, Ryan? Chris is very sneaky. He's like next to me, and then one second he's just gone. I don't come even on, hear him leave. Come on, come yeah, the, the interactions today are keeping us real busy. Yeah, I saw the board. And Christopher actually, um, he does sign language too, so he has like five of those sign language interactions today. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot. Push in there if you want, Jeff. Center it up. Oh, an anemone growing on the primnoa there. <laughs> Coyote. Interesting. And this is a primnoid. Primnoid. Yep. With C star. Yep. With a D, yep. Thaurella is the genus, I believe. Norella. Thaurella, T H. Thaurella. A little different one. Our scientists ashore are pretty excited to see this because you typically see this genus quite a bit shallower. Okay. And they took a sample of it earlier in the dive. Try and figure out what species it is. And that's a brittle star, yeah? Yes. There was a question that came in. Corals and sponges stay in one place their whole lives, or do they move around? Typically uh, attach. Up a bit and uh, see if we can get that in the DSC. I don't know if we'll be able to here. Oh no, it is in the DSC. I'm gonna come closer, sorry. Just gonna land here to uh, Get a DSC pick so it's not blurry. Great. You can push in while I'm landing if you want to. Come on, Hurt. Don't move. Okay, got it. Looks like another umbella pathies down there. Uh, push in there if you want. Okay. Coyote. Or uh, this is a glass sea sponge. Glass sponge. Push in again if you want. Hey, Kota, can I? Mm hmm. Okay. There was a big fish just swam by while we were zoomed in. 
it's uh, already long gone, I think. I believe there are sponges who attach themselves to crabs, or maybe the other way around, the crab grabs the sponge and puts it on his back. And those definitely move. Curious where you got that information from. I saw a picture. Oh, really? Of a sponge on a crab. I have pictures. I'm going to show you later. Okay. And I think we might be putting it on a highlighted on the website, hopefully. Oh. Oh, it was on here? Yeah. It was, oh, on, it was okay. on these dives that had the sponges on top of the backs of crabs. I saw it on a show. I didn't think we would see one. I'll have to show you later. Nice. Yeah. Crinoid. Hello. I want to see one swim. Apparently they can swim. We saw one swimming one what? time. Oh, I must have missed it. I'll have to show you. Yeah. It's pretty crazy looking. I want to see that. Peek over here at the other rocks we haven't seen and then we'll... Chief scientist. <laughs> you want the ship moving that way too? Uh, not yet, no. Well, Another of these Rossalid vase sponges. Here where we haven't been, and then uh, we'll get out of here. There's cylinder sponges. What's a silica, Ryan? Sorry? What's a silica? How do sponges form their silica structures? Yeah, so that's uh, what makes up the glass portion of the glass sponges. Mm. Um, so they're literally made of glass, little glass spicules. Um, so they pull the silica from the water. So seawater has a certain amount of silica in it that sponges are able to t you incorporate into their tissues. Cool. Push in a bit there if you want, Jeff. What's that thing? That's an anemone. Oh. Uh, there's a fish in bubble cam. It looks like those chompers from Mario. things that come out of the green tubes. It does. <laughs> so yesterday we had the covenant from Halo, today we have chompers <laughs> from <laughs> Mario Brothers. If it makes anyone feel better, I don't speak any kind of game gaming language at all, so Mario There's a fish still right in front I of feel us. Like that's the only game I know. Yeah, I think I'm like uh, the perfect age for the Halo reference, so <laughs> I get that one. What kind of fish did you see, Paul? I don't know, one of those kind of medium-sized shiny ones. Mm. Hmm. I like their kind of fluorescent green looking stripe. Mm. Mm. So if a piece of a coral colony um, is broken off, can it reattach itself to something and start a new colony or? I think there are certain species that do that. Um, there's a thing called polyp bailout um, where individual polyps will detach from the colony and then um, sort of disperse. I'm not sure how often that happens in deep water corals. Mm. Push in a bit if you want. Another bamboo coral. Bamboo coral.
guy there below it. Yeah, urchin. Looks like some nodules over here, yeah? Yeah. And Val's typing, so you might have something to say about. I'm gonna go down to the south here. Oh. We are at the halfway mark. Oh, that does make it rock o'clock. <laughs> True. I think, uh, what's the state of the basket, Fiona? How's the starboard basket looking? Um, it's pretty full right now. A is empty, but we're kind of avoiding opening that because there's a loose sponge in the other mm. starboard. That could float box. away. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Why? What are we looking to pick up? If we're going by what we usually do, which is rock a clock, we would collect a rock right now. But there's no bio to collect? Not right now. Oh. I think it was, which one was it? Hmm. I forgot which one Diane told me was open. Where is she at? So the urchin getting ready to attack? Yeah. <laughs> Ready to make the climb. <laughs> <laughs> Found its next five years worth of food. Yeah. Mm. Well, then now you're correct. Crabs do pick up sponges, apparently, and put them on their backs. We've the seen that. The family of hom Homolidae. Yep, and we've seen ones with zoanthid corals on their back, too. Oh, corals, too. Wow. And anemones, right? Yeah, anemones. I think there are this examples. Is where I saw it. <laughs> That's cool. You were going to say something, Ryan. Uh, we do have a couple of spots in the bio box. If we see something loose, maybe take a look. But for now, let's take a look at this fish. Right. There's a fish. This is the codlet we're looking at. Shed a bit there if you want to. Codlet. Good things. Sort of working just to stay in the same place. Mm -hmm. Wiggling its butt. <laughs> it's happy to see us. Good dog. <laughs> <laughs> it is also excited about rock o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> and then for the rock o'clock, are we looking for a, a one for Val or Beth? Usually Val, right? Yep. Sort of real angular looking one. I'm also, I mean... Do we still have room for a rock? I think we do. There's a couple of smaller bio box spots on the starboard side. I feel like this is the most I've ever seen big fish in one of these dines. Yeah, we've. We're uh, pretty shallow, so I think. It's a very bright fish over there. It's so pretty. It is pretty. Yeah, that's a uh, in the family Moridae, according to Chris Kelly. Moridae. Moridae. Another eel-like fish there. 
What does SP stand for? Species. Ah. That's when we know the genus, but don't know what, what species it is. We mm. spy it. Or it's right, SP. <laughs> Roger. Thank <laughs> you. Someone's wondering what the process is um, when you guys find the species that you can't um, identify. So what's the process of trying to identify it and how long does that take? Yeah, it can take a really long time because it is a really intricate process. You have to bring it back to the lab, compare its morphology to other specimens, um, which you might need to get from a museum or really dig through the literature to find. Um, typically these days involve taking a DNA sample too, um, so that you can look at how it is molecularly different than other species we know of and place it um, that way as well. So uh, yeah, it can take a, a very long time, years often, Wow. months to years. <laughs> this was a, this is an eel. Is a conger eel? Yeah, conger eel. Ship moving back conger eel. C O N G E R. No, I'm just going to follow the uh, feature cool. out here to the south till we run out to the and then uh, we can continue the move. I'm going to go south and then north before we move. Roger. Kind of a north-south feature there, so I went all the way to the north uh, as far as the tether would go, and follow our nose to the south here for a while. I wonder if you think that one may be? Maybe not. That might be uh, filled with brown manganese. Yeah, I don't know about that one. Roger. So, uh, Ryan, we've come, uh, we came across this kind of feature and it runs north-south. Yep. So we've gone to the north, this tether excursion, and we've gone to the south, tether excursion. So we could continue going north or south and kind of follow the rock feature, or we could continue on to the west as we uh, were going when we came across this feature. I think we should continue just going north, I believe. What's that? You want to turn and burn to the north? Uh, or actually, let, let's just keep on the going up west towards making our way up. Right. But if we see anything interesting in the sonar we want to follow, we can definitely do that. If we zoom on this, though, this What's is very this? interesting. Drop right down on the deck for a minute there, Paul. So furry looking. It's so lovely. It's so fluffy. Oh. Rondinari do Gorgia. Oh, so a Chrysogorgia, Rodinari do Gorgia. Wow. Rodinari do Gorgia. <laughs> As if Iridogorgia wasn't enough of a mouthful. It's so pretty. Yeah, beautiful. Just gonna drop that. It looks like a it. feather uh, duster. Digital stills cam. <laughs> it does look like a feather duster. Go for a oh, uh, tight zoom, like Jeff, while we're waiting for the great spelling. To do its thing. I <laughs> think scientist ashore. Mm -hmm. I did just see the DSC click. Did no click? rush. Yeah, I did see one. Wow.
How does that thing work, the DSC? Uh, it's it's yeah. set on time in interval meter every 30 seconds. But it just takes a still from the video? Yeah, it's taking a still. We're just looking at no, the preview. Not, not from the video, it's its own camera. Oh. And that's why Dan likes to have that little window up, is that it frames the shot just a little bit differently because it's in a slightly different place. So oh, that's a way. physical camera. Yeah, yeah, it's oh, its yeah, own it's camera. A physical DSLR in a oh. watertight housing that is up above the Herc Zeus looking kind of down. Gotcha. So it's slightly different framing. What's good for me isn't necessarily good for the oh. DCS. We are. Yeah, I'm going to pull on you here to come around this way and then we'll uh, come back to the north. Can you I say that word for me again? Road near de Gorgia. Road near de Gorgia. I love a good eight syllable name. <laughs> <laughs> my altitude and my delta are both at seven. So I, Roger. I don't quite have the tether to come around. I'll come back. Would you guys happen to know um, when you guys put the, those metal plates down if anything grows on it after that? I don't know if things would like to settle on. Um, metal like that. I think it just breaks down, mm. which is why we use it. Yeah. So that it can just break down over time. I've never uh, seen one of the ones that we've dropped, like on a f subsequent dive, because we rarely dive to the same place, same we've, exact place twice. We've come so. across weights, not our weights, before. And, but you can't judge, you know. It's like, are they a year old? Are they five years old? Mm. They were still distinguishable. Mm. And was there anything on them? Um, not that I recall. Yeah, I've yeah. seen stuff Have growing you? on them. Uh, if they were there long enough. Yeah, we've been like in the middle of nowhere thinking we're the first people We zoom on this little one. Come across choose? the mountain weights. Where, like, we to, the, to the point of barely discernible, you know, from like the 70s. And, and we're supposed to be careful because the help folks don't always like us attributing all the weights in the ocean to Alvin. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they can be a pile of rust there. I've seen sponges or anemones growing on them, depending on the depth. And I've never seen any corals on them. Where'd he go? Should be coming up is. on it. Yeah. Blow you into the left. There you go. There it is. Okay. Dead. All right, that's great. Thanks. Uh, can I wait to Carl? I've heard you guys call those weights Alvin weights, the ones you put on Herc. Yeah. Are they the Close same up. kind? They are the same. Yeah. Mahalo. Mm hmm. Purple one down there is another Abelopathies type of black coral. Been seeing quite a bit the last hour and a half or so. Ten meter ship move due south. Oh. It'll be okay. We 
take a look at the bright yellow when we get up to it. Yeah. Okay. How much does each weight, um, each weight, weigh? I think they're uh, eight or nine pounds. Thank you. In water? Yeah, they're half inch steel. Uh, probably, uh, I don't know, nine by 12, something like that. About I think another an Alipsamia hard coral here. Push in more if you want there, Jeff. Ooh. Very cool. Yellow. That's really bright. Yeah, I mean, very cool branching pattern. Looks like the polyps are open on the other side. Yeah, those. They're all facing the other way, aren't they? Yeah, they are. This is so beautiful. It is. Mm -hmm. All right, that's great. Thanks. Come on, I'll come around and look at the other side if we can. Can you peer away? What are the textbooks you'd recommend for someone who'd like to get into marine biology and chemistry? Like a little bit. Hmm, that's a great question. Um, textbooks that I enjoy. <laughs> no, I like textbooks. Um, wow, I'm really blanking. I feel like if you would go to a college universe, like a university's um, bookstore, you could go into the marine biology section and there might be some textbooks there and take a couple of minutes or right. some time to just look. Yeah, the porch light. there's some great marine invertebrates textbooks. I don't know what it would do, but yeah, there we go. It's like sunshine in the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> Biology of the marine invertebrates. Great one. It's the weight down below, is it? Yeah, we're getting reflection. Close up of the yellow coral analop analopsamia. Yeah, analopsamia. Analopsamia. Capella Anna. And that E N A L L O P. So is the gray now that's in kind of the center of the screen at the bottom, is that just dead? They look like zoanthids to me. Or is it yeah, different species? And dusty zoanthids, I'm not S sure. A M M I A. Chris Kelly says um, look a bonus urchin. Barnes invertebrate zoology for a good textbook. Yeah, that's a great one. That's the one I was searching for in my brain. I used to teach invertebrates labs with that one. Is the urchin getting ready for a snack there? Oh yeah, it's little tentacles are like playing with the coral there. Playing is a nice way of putting it. <laughs> <laughs> is it gonna rip out the polyps? It probably will eat polyps, yep. Yeah. Oh. Or you want to just drop a time lapse camera for the next two years or whatever. Yeah, yeah it does. Okay. This porch light. <laughs> Kill the porch light for a small. Deep sea engineering. Yeah. <laughs> porch light coming off. Thank you. All right, ready for a ship move? No. Nope. Okay. <laughs> mm. 
you mind putting um, that page to the comment, please? Comment page. Thank you so much. So the reason we put weights onto Hercules is so that um, as we're collecting uh, samples, i.e. rocks, zoom there, Jeff, where the dust cloud hits. they are heavy. So to make the vehicle neutrally buoyant again, we take down rocks and we take down these weights so that when we collect rocks, we can release weights um, so that we maintain this neutrally buoyant Hercules vehicles. Dust cloud. Okay. Oh no, sandstorm. Yeah, so looking at another euplectalid glass sponge here. Uh, Chris Kelly tentatively ID'd the one earlier as Dictialis. Oh, yeah, let me just set it again. So. This is about where we started. Excursion north and south. Yeah. West, you say, huh? Yeah, keep making our way up, I guess. Hopefully, see some more interesting things. Ready? Yeah, now you can kick it with the gear. Rich, this is Nav. We are definitely still. Four zero meters, two five zero, please. We are still exploring the. Hawaiian waters. We're about. We're in Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument, which is uh, northwest of the main Hawaiian Islands that we all know. Of. Bridge. This is Nav. Thank you to our students who are tuning in from classes that came to interact with us earlier on in the day. Welcome to the Nana's live uh, feed here. Thank you for joining us. Thing. Did you just change that? Yeah. Yeah, I just clicked it once and it decided to go crazy. Yeah, that's what I, it's the fifth time now. I hit stop though and it stopped. Yeah. At least that time it did. Which way is the current running here, Dan? Um, I've lost the plot now. Here, I'll do a uh, rough landing and you'll get an idea. Uh, we turned around so many times I've forgotten now. <laughs> Zoom in on the star while we're here. Oh, interesting little spikes on it. Whoa. Some armor on him, huh? Yeah. This is a sea star? Yeah. Oh, look, it's moving. Mm -hmm. It's crawling. Or it's floating with the current. Or flowing with the current. I think I can see its tube feet going. So 
so. You can have your computer back, April. Thank you. So the Nautilus Live, uh, we host ship to shore interactions where teachers can register and um, sign up to have classroom this visits. This one here, it uh, clears With the last person that's called the, you. The SCF members on board. Okay, off we go. So if you hit clear, then you can, so like I hit clear now if you talk. Hello. You talking to me? So, no, we're discussing the Sorry. buttons up here on the front. The right. intricacies of the intercom. Yeah, I, I cleared a few things by accident, and I was worried that had consequences. No, oh. you can clear them all out and yeah. you can tell uh, who's calling you. Oh, okay. that's just like a reminder? Yeah. So it's just well, actually, there is a way to set up a um, messaging system that will actually you can record a blip of a message and store it in the intercom, and then you can go back and play it back, uh, which we have not set up, nor are we going to set up, so oh. that, that's part of that system. We totally should set that yeah. up. No, we are totally not going to set that up. <laughs> with the slurp, with the slurp sound, so yeah. just play it back. That sounds like it has so much potential. <laughs> there are, it's funny, about two weeks in, people start pushing buttons and go, hey, what does this do? <laughs> Two weeks ago, y'all walked into this van and went, ah, there's a lot of buttons there. <laughs> I'll get thrown overboard. Bridge, this is Nev. Four zero meters bearing 250, please. Two weeks after I get off the boat, I won't remember what any one of them does. Yeah, I know. It, it, it always takes me a day to come back and go, okay, what does this do? Oh, yeah, that's right. To go to the Grafana, this tab, this one, real time. Sorry, what? The real time. You're looking for temperature. Yeah. Which one? Right real here. time data, Grafana. Mm. Oh, okay. About five degrees centigrade. Everything good here? Interesting uh, nodule pattern. Can we look back at that coral actually? Sure. Sorry about that.
Yep, so I think it's probably a primillid. That's a great look, thanks. Would anybody happen to know how deep humans can go with scuba gear? I'm not sure, actually, what the depth limit is. Let's see. Damn, I know. Depends upon what you're breathing. 130 feet is the limit. Although I'm. But then there's the uh, like industry that they'll put you down in those pressure chambers, and you'll actually live at depth for. Yeah. Those are an atmospheric diving suit allows you to go to 610 meters. Wow. Wow, that's crazy. It's about how deep we are. Yeah, I'd you be imagine? pretty surprised if we came across a person <laughs> out for a fun <laughs> dive right now. Rock climbing. <laughs> Surfing. <laughs> Surfing. I'm going to look that up. I want to see if it's possible. Or I don't know, fishing. <laughs> Come up just a bit, Paul. I think the sat divers as deep as I've seen them is 300 meters, less than 300 meters, probably 1,000 feet, something like that. All right, well, we're uh, probably about time to look around for a rock um, before coming up. If you see anything that looks good. Lots of rocks. We need an A-size rock, do we? Yeah, smaller insert. What time are we off bottom here? <laughs> Uh, 11, about. Yeah. That gives us a little extra time, so. Yeah. You want to uh, stop him up there? Stop the ship. That's it has. This one looks pretty oh, nice. Sorry. Although I it might be a little big. Yeah. Any in particular? What, what do we think about that going in the smaller? Yeah, should it go. I think so. Okay, let's give it a shot. Let's see if Val what is protests. It, 15 meters oh, a minute, Dan? Yeah, well, we're doing half a knot. Yeah, 15 meters a minute. Oh, for coming up? Yeah. Yeah, 15. Half a knot up. Can you hear Oh. Yeah, about 15 minutes. Five zero. Oh, sorry, I'll come back in for a view in just a second. It's on top of the light there. It does, I have got the lasers. You didn't want to grab it with the other arm? <laughs> <laughs> Could see better. Be a good challenge. Looks There's like a little cup car all on it. Yeah. Another one of those conger eels down there. With a big a fan. huge bamboo. All right. All right. You're good. Thank you. Okay, if you come around and get close before you. Uh, Open the box. Bamboo, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll dead stick when we go on the box so we don't blow out whatever's in there. Mahalo. Whenever you're ready, tell me. The very base of that bamboo is 10 centimeters. Looks like it. Yeah, that's a big one. Want me to? I can be ready on the opening the box so you went? Um, yeah, I think we're ready now. Okay. Remember, we've got some floaty stuff in here. Yeah, I'm just going to uh, know all the thrusters on the vehicle, so we're... Great. Ooh. Floating up slowly. Uh, is this going to fit in there? Yeah, it'll fit Doesn't standing up. Doesn't look like it. Um, Drop it in there. 
Mapopo ay kahaluan na po ay makikita mo ako. Kanaha ako maiba. Kanaha ako maiba. That's including the ship's crew. Okay. Um, so including the ship's crew right now, I believe there's about 48 people on board. Oh. Touchdown. Nicely Good job. Done. Beautiful. Nice. It made it into that box. A. Yeah? Was that A? Yep. That was A. All right. So we're actually thinking of looking for another rock. We can see another or more angular one than that, Val's requested. Roger. Is this sample 177? Yeah. That we just took? Okay. Mm -hmm. It's probably something good in, in here. Move the map out of the way for a minute. Put an image of this guy here in the DSC. These look pretty good to me. Ryan, I feel like you're a big part of this watch. Thanks. <laughs> you too. Keeping the questions coming is important. one are we going for here um how about this one copy that <laughs> i'm loving this i'm gonna call it a berzingit star yeah you can see where it, its arm got bit off here and then it's regrowing the oh other yeah. one. Oh, yeah. Brzingit star? Yeah. Yes. Brzingit. Your favorite word to spell? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. Brzingit. Is I that accurate? I don't think you made that word up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I think. No, no. Can you come back? Oh. Yeah. Um, do it one more time? Yep. I'll push it, put it in the light. Is that up? Yeah. Nope. Yeah, it might be a little away from the vehicle. Patrioidal like. for our liking. More away. There, now it's in the light. Beautiful. Val is typing, so we'll see how she can weigh in. Mm. It looks bumpy to me. Yeah, maybe too baked. Yeah. Yeah, Val is not liking this one too much. He said the two that are closer might be better. I think maybe she means this one or this one. The uh, second one he marked there. I didn't see the second one. This one, I think, was the right second there. one. Copy that. Easier to grab for it, I think. Oh, sorry. Touch it once, see if it's loose. Yeah. That's a grab there. Nice. This is, we're actually going to, um, we're going to take this one. Val's happy with it. Yeah, exclamation point. <laughs> All right. That's what we like to see. Good on the uh, zoom here. Yeah, you're good. Push it there, Jeff, while we're storing the rock. Um, somebody's wondering if 
um, bamboo coral get big enough that they can break? Yeah, I'm sure that happens in a, in a strong current. What's Sometimes this guy, sorry to interrupt, is this like, guy going in one of the big boxes? Or? Uh, yeah, I think that's the only place where it would fit. What's that? Um, Which I'm one? Not, I, I'm not too sure if the one in F is a lot smaller. Maybe we can try that one first. We did end up with that other rock in there. Yeah. Uh, yeah I but I think it's too big. Problem. All right, it's enough. Okay. Awesome. Beautiful. Thank nice. you. Yeah, that's great. Good job, team. Two rocks right at the end. Brizink at star to, <laughs> to end this, <laughs> the view. That can be your rap, rap look, name, look Paul. Look at its tiny, Two rocks. <laughs> tiny little <laughs> arms growing out of there. Yeah. Cute. Wow, I'm loving this close up. Look at it. That's yeah, a pretty cool. Really cool texture on it. This is giving me life. You can Where see a fish in the starboard cam there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Came to check out our rock samples. Mm hmm. Yeah, good look at the tube feet here. This is great. Akahi no akahi Aye. Okay, cool. Okay. Got a half hour left. 20 minutes, I think. Huh? Yeah, just under. I get 45 minutes to get up at noon, right? Uh, yeah, 45, 50. <laughs> what does it say on that paper there? Yeah. To, for the time we wanted to come off bottom. Dwight said we could s potentially think about start coming up at 11, maybe come up a little slower. Roger. Huh? <laughs> 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 or come up fast and spend more time looking. Yeah, I think that's what he meant. <laughs> <laughs> Loss of translation. Totally. He's not here right now. Yeah, sometimes it's easier to get forgiveness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you still seeing uh, interesting stuff north south? Mm, no, we're we'll be good. Let me get uh, look around here oh. for a minute, and then we'll. What's up? Our fearless leader returns. <laughs> <laughs> big bamboo. Would you happen to know if um, corals grow a certain amount every year, or does it depend on the environment, mental changes, yeah, maybe that's species? A, that's a great question. I'm not sure how variable it is, you know, depending on, for example, how much food is coming down um, seasonally or whatnot. That is a really good question, though. Was that a picture just now? or? Yeah, you got one. Dwight, would you like this chair back? No, you can keep it. <laughs> okay. We only have about 15 minutes of bottom time left, I think. Right. Roger. 10 minutes, 10. I, uh, 700 divided by 15 gives me uh, 45. Okay. But then again, I failed horribly at math, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, some interesting glass sponges here. Five. Or one interesting Look glass sponge. Look at the black uh, coral then. The yeah. Sponge. Yeah, that sounds great. I think this is a, a liopathies, maybe. Mm. I, I calculated we were at 750, and it would take us 50 minutes, but we're shallower than 750. I, is that right? I cheated. Rounded to seven. Uh, what's <laughs> our actual depth? 728. Okay. So let's go to uh, 20 uh, 2105. Right. 15 minutes to find some cool stuff. I believe this is a rock car, I mean a black car, but yep. I'm getting somewhere. Find some more yeah. cool stuff. Your ID and corals all there. over the place. Are those squat lobsters? Or yep. No? Mm. 
really see the, the black protonaceous skeleton pretty well on this specimen. Protonaceous. Mm. Does anything eat these? That falls in, is it, Jeff? I'm not sure. The Look squatties? Little mandibles. Do you yeah, mean the squat there. lobster root? Squat lobsters, Paul? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if there are fish that can eat them here. I could eat them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not a ton of meat, but probably delicious. Does he actually have a tail there? Just tucked away, you can't see it. Hmm. This manipulator is getting deployed. This is an amazing sampling. shot. Their arms look a little bit like the left arm of Herc. Spastic. <laughs> well, I meant in the terms of joints and like the claw at the end. Mm. I like the claw, the magnum. It kind of reminds me of a snapping turtle or something. Whoa. Are you pushed all the way in, Jeff? Yeah. Close enough to see us always working so this whatever mouth that bu whatever business <laughs> whatever yeah, whatever the things you call the little brain mantis things there. Don't know. T Rex arms. Yeah. Yeah. Ready to throw some hands. <laughs> One of our scientists ashore said sharks potentially eat these. So mm. sharks have come up with black coral in their stomach. Um so they think that they were probably going for some of these, but got some black coral along oh, the way. That sounds kind of painful, right? Probably somewhat. They're probably pretty tough. I believe the ROVs are fueled by electricity that is run down through the 6-8 wire and the tether. <coughs> so that's how they're powered, for sure. Um, Hercules also uses a lot of hydraulics, so we have a big hydraulic power unit that is run off electricity, um, but then the thrusters and a lot of the pan tilt, you know, movement functions and the arm, um, it's actually hydraulic fluid. So it's kind of both and a good question. Awesome. 2,400 volts running down the three wires, and the three 12 gauge wires. And the Wait, the thrusters are also hydraulically powered? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, the 2400 volts goes directly to uh, a and just put still motor. going. What? It's a modified um, well motor, actually. That's where they came from in the early days. Spinning in a crazy 3600 RPMs. It spins a hydraulic pump that's uh, de stroked just for that because usually a motor spins at 1800 RPMs. Are we good on this one, Ryan? Yep. That's great. Thank you. Ten minutes to zoom around here. Oh, we have to look at this sponge first. Yeah. We haven't got a who's home shot in a while. <laughs> it looks a little a bit like a bubble horn. cam who's home shot. Yeah, I don't think you can tilt. You don't have the front flip? Function enabled? No. Oh, look at that. It looks we like it has the, the mesh thing on top, too. It does. Yeah. That looks yeah, so Yeah, I've seen cool. you try to sieve max out that a few times. Is that like a glass sponge? No. Yeah. My kai. <laughs> Let's see who's home in bubble. Nobody? Nobody. Oh. That bubble cam view is giving me life. Whoever's home wanted some privacy. Very cool. Wow. Yeah, it's Push a beauty. It on the uh, web there on the top if you want. It's always Dictyolosis. Cool. That's definitely not how you say <laughs> Dictyalis? Dictyalis. I'm guessing too, so.
amazing close up here of that top layer. Yeah, really nice shot. Ryan, do they form these top layers from the get-go or only when they reach like a certain size? I'm not sure. That's a good question. It's a, yeah, a sieve plate, as Chris Kelly is noting in the chat. So. I think I saw a little brittle star or something in there. It doesn't seem like it can get out. Oh, really? <laughs> Yeah, you often see them in those like sort of pores on the side, like their arms hanging out. So not on this one though. Water enters the sides of them and then they exit out the top. Mm. Yeah, I can really see it. the lattice structure there. It's very cool. Beautiful. They have little spikies. Cool. You can kind of only had a hole, and then it just can just put still going. That's great. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, that was an awesome close-up. Yeah. Oh, a little fish hanging out. Do sponges only grow at a certain depth? Or do they grow in the shallow, too? Yeah, they're in shallow waters, for sure. sponges take advantage of the venturi, um, venturi effect, like blowing over a coke bottle. Water passing over the top osculum draws water into the sides. That fish was a Neoscopolis. <laughs> I'm trying my best over here. Nice. No, no I'm, I'm just laughing at <laughs> The way you read the first one was good. <laughs> really shiny rock here. Do, uh, geology is in there if you want to. Yeah, you're doing great. So private oasis inside the bowl. Yeah. So we've been most of this dot or most of uh, this watch has been with plus one and a half wraps, and that's where we zeroed it. So we've got to either come up with. Yeah, right. Uh, we'll work it out on the way up. Got some cool ripples in the Atlanta so, cam yeah, right now. I was just looking at that. Thank you so much, Chris Kelly. I appreciate you. That was, were those sea anemones in there? Look like anemones, yeah. Whoa. Sorry, I just came off bottom. That's right. Beautiful. So the sieve on the top of the sponges, it's not, not, it's not necessarily to keep fish inside. It's to, I feel like it's to gather all the food that it 
is trying to eat because the way sponges eat is it pumps water through it to collect every all the it's a filter feeder so mm -hmm. it's filtering the water <clears throat> Do the biological samples become damaged as they ascend into lower pressure? No, typically not, sure unless it's something that had like an air pocket in it, like mm -hmm. a fish. Those can get damaged because they have uh, air in their bladders, swim bladders. Um, but everything we bring up comes up relatively uh, in shape. Pitonid urchin. Greedy. I believe the shininess on the on the rocks may come from the currents on top of it, but I don't know. It might be from other things too. And it's actually that's right. on the fish oh one. fishy. Interesting fish. The fish hunt ID. Oh, it might be that one. No, maybe. This one might be in the bifididae. Oh, Chris Bif is saying ophidid, actually, so. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I'm bouncing around quite a bit here. Oh, kahia uli oya. Okay. Looks like it's got like a mischievous little smile on. <laughs> Up to no good. They weren't making it mad. <laughs> and the rocks that we're looking at are actually seem to be encrusted with ferromanganese. Oh yeah. Striations are really interesting. Okay. Come down Do we have, yep. have any idea what caused those? No. I really have no clue. I wonder if Dwight, Val's maybe? typing. She might have or, an or idea. Or Val, maybe. Shut up can, in this sorry, Mystic, can you repeat? where these in lacerations in the rocks come from? Oh, yeah. I'm perplexed by that. I don't know. That um, says maybe current. Could be. They look. They were looking earlier like they were all in the sort of same, going in the same direction. So I was thinking it could be related to um, faulting or tectonic mov movement of some kind, but um, that it's really unclear. I, I wouldn't think the rocks up on top of the summit, summit would be affected like that. So this could be scour or, yeah, from the currents. Awesome. Thank you. Not really sure. They're Great. interesting, though. Oh, look. It looks like a cup, Carl. Yep. Just for Dan. <laughs> You're getting really good with your IDs. It's a cup coral. Is it? Yeah, it is. Wow, it's a big one. Yeah, we, we collected one of these the other night, uh, bigger okay. cup coral like that. It's the one that got stuck in the slurp. 
camera's really fast in shallow water here. All right. I don't think we're in too much of a rush, but we are at 06. Yeah. We're going to turn into a pumpkin soon. Dwight? <laughs> I'm preoccupied with a lot of other logistics that are Sorry. happening around this ship. <laughs> shall, okay. we, shall we come up? Is it time to oh, ascend? Uh, yeah. Um, technically, we have four minutes, three and a half minutes. All right. Okay, cool. Do you want to grab one last quick sample? <laughs> We could grab that cup coral. Yeah. I know some people are working on population genetics of them, so every sample is worthwhile. Can you get the rock that it's on? I think it's on like a pretty solid like overhang. Yeah. That looked like a cup coral too there, but yeah, maybe. we already did get a rock from the summit, so I don't think we need an another one and we don't really have room for it. Unless we double up. And how do we propose to get this? Because we can't use a slurp. Uh, it grab? Slurp it or grab it. Can't slurp they it. Can, they can't be grabbed. They can't be grabbed? They can be, yeah. Oh, can, yeah. Seems like challenge has been accepted. Yeah, they're pretty hard. Stony coral. Uh, uh. Sorry, I'm in a rush here. Very sandy, would you say? Yeah. Oh, wow, look. There's another thing poking out of the sand there. What is that? Almost looks like a hermit crab. It totally oh, does. Yeah, I think well, it you is. could uh, try to put it, in, uh, put it in a tube core. Push is core. that an anemone crab or something? Yeah, it might be one of those homolid crabs. What is the approach for... Here, you want me to... Let me do it. Yeah, we saw one of these decorator crabs uh, at the summit of Nuka right before recovery, too. He's trying to asking for amnesty. He's going to climb up the rock <laughs> and try and jump on. Zoom <laughs> <laughs> in there, too. He's saying, please take this anemone off my back. <laughs> Zoom in a bit more. Oh, look, it kind of just fell off. Mm -hmm. Difficult sample. Well, now you know how not to do it. <laughs> you could. Do you want to try to scoop it, or or? Uh, yeah, I mean the tissue's still there. We could make use of that. You could um, knock it into the sand and do a scoop sample, maybe. I don't know where to store it though. Uh, yeah. What would you do with it then? Um, could put it in the. Uh, Put it in the nodule bag. Uh, unlikely in the time we have left. Which we're out, are we not? We probably should start heading up. Yeah. Thanks for trying. Yep, thanks. Thank you. It's always great to end on an epic fail. <coughs> <laughs> okay, Paul, start coming up. The, uh, if we had the parallel jaws, that might have been doable. If you oh. can. I'm just going to turn off my auto heading. Yeah, Roger. I'm going to pull you around here. Hopefully I'm pulling you in the right way. Good 
Could you take a coral fragment from this step um, and, and then have it survive in a tank at the surface? Yep. Uh, the lab that I work in does that quite often, and we use them for experiments and things like that. Cool. It was definitely an interesting dive. The scientists here are tuning in on how it was a great dive. Good job, everybody. Yeah. Too bad we have to eat, sleep, and work. <laughs> <laughs> OK. So many swimming things, yeah, totally. Roger. I think we have a thousand and one questions that have come in, and maybe now we can finally address some of them. Um, Rich, sorry, I'll go off my spiel. Fiona, you have to choose a question that you think you can answer. Here we go. Well, you need your headset on. Step one, headset on. I can I can help you choose. I'm gonna I'm gonna put this on onto my screen too, uh, like so. <laughs> Seven meters up. How long to the surface? I think less than an hour. Maybe fifty minutes, forty-five minutes. I mean, so far, like our time has been spot on when it comes to reaching the surface. You can definitely answer this question. <laughs> How many eDNA did you end up taking? On, let's let's say this dive. That'll be easy. How many easy. dives have we done so far? Just on this dive alone, how many Maybe. DNAs did we take? I feel like the NISC, if I look at the NISCIN, I see what looks like Six, four or three NISCIN samples were taken. 18. I think we were taking like six eDNA samples for like three dives. Right? Yeah. Yeah, and then it went down to four and then three. So my guess is probably like 30. Mm. Why? That's why the question is oh. on the on the thing. No, yeah, don't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Uh, I'm trying to look for questions. Uh, Faulting affecting just the very top of the edge rocks. That that was to discuss about those lacerations that we were seeing in the in the top of the crust. Yeah, we are without geologists now, so. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if we're gonna get any any better than that. Um, <laughs> half the time, I feel like we are asking each other questions. Like uh, those of us who are sitting in here, we ask each other questions, and then the other half of the time, we are stating statements. We are saying the statements and answering the questions. OK. This I don't know if we talked about this. Um, we were explaining earlier in the weights on Hercules and how they um, we leave them at the ocean floor to adjust with the, um, make sure that we're equally buoyant, neutrally buoyant. Um, and there was a question on um, what kind of effects do the weights have on the ecosystem when they are left behind? So we try to make it zero effect and so the material that is used is it it's iron right guys 
Yeah, they are. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's iron, and then like it slowly just disintegrates over time. And then the rope we use is hemp, so it's natural, and that also just kind of disintegrates over time. <coughs> Val has stated she's in the lounge if we want geology facts, so we can keep that in mind. Okay, cool. Thank you, thank you, Val. Yeah. What a trooper staying staying nearby during the blue water. Totally. Okay, I think we've. Do we ever measure the marine snow density? Yeah, people put sediment traps down at the bottom and they can get an idea of the content and rate at which the sediment is falling down. Okay, this person was late to the party. What do, um, what do we look for in a rock? How do we decide what rock to pick up? Mm. So there's two kinds of rocks that we're, well actually there's all kinds of rocks that we're going for, but there's two particular studies that we're trying to conduct throughout these expeditions. One is to date the age of these, um, of these seamounts, and the other is to, um, can you say it, micro? Yeah, we're looking at the, the community composition, uh, diversity, and productivity of some of the microbes that live on these uh, ferromanganese crusts we see on a lot of these rocks. <laughs> um, and so for that, we're looking for rocks that have a, a thick black crust on the outside. I think I gotta make some bigger holes so we get more water flow <laughs> and hopefully some more movement. Good job with the eye. I see you. <laughs> That's what the arm brand is saying. It's I see. Yeah. <laughs> Where did these eyes come from? Did someone just have googly eyes? <laughs> <coughs> yeah, so uh, there was one large googly eye on, on board, and um, we had the question of, what do we need to do to make it work underwater? Um, and that's, so that's the question for the audience, is what changes do you think we had to make from a regular googly eye uh, <laughs> to bring it down 2,500 meters? There actually were two googly eyes on board at one point, I mm. believe. Huh? Is, is the other one there, too? Googly eyes and its pursuits throughout the world. <clears throat> so for the dive schedule, we, um, I feel like if you go to our web, the Nautilus Live website, we have a general overview of the mission of the expedition, but the dive schedules are posted after we conclude a dive, whether we will be conducting a new dive or if we're finished with dives, and um, that will be posted on the um, the status, the status update, which is where you will be watching live if you're watching on our website. At, and if you're not watching not live from the website and you want to go there, you can go to nautiluslive.org. <coughs> and there you can, there's a comment section and then you can see where we're at currently. Um, you can see the depth that we're diving at for both vehicles and a couple of other um, information from the Grafana there, I believe. Mm. So, is there a reason you take an eDNA at the end of some dives and not uh, at other dives? Did you think? <coughs> um, from my understanding, we primarily take eDNAs in high diversity areas just so that we can see the different types of corals that are there. Um, what about then, the ones we take at the end when we're like off bottom? Oh, what are those shoot. for? Shoot, I don't know, Ryan, can you explain <laughs> that? <laughs> yeah, so we take them a little ways off bottom, so, so we have like a background that we can compare yeah. them to, so just so what we generally pick up in the water. So 
you were, you were saying, sorry. I didn't no, that, that was it, basically. Oh. <laughs> Sometimes I'm, I'm talking, I don't really know when <laughs> I'm actually going to stop, and then I just sort of stop. There's no period at the end of a sentence. Sometimes when we're talking, it's yeah. just open-ended to I let the conversation continue I and I flow. Just say full stop when I'm done. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Radio code, you can just say over or... Over, yeah, that's better that's than right. full stop. Like right. I'm <laughs> British. <laughs> <coughs> oh, okay. I know what you meant by that question now. Do you want to answer it? Yeah, because we don't have a lot of filters now, so we cannot be taking backgrounds. So our backgrounds come from the samples we collect for Beth, because there's usually not a lot of diversity where we collect her rocks from, so they just serve as background. Mm. Yeah. And I don't think you need as many of those, so it's not like we're necessarily losing that valuable of samples. Yeah. You get the idea of what the background is like from relatively fewer samples. Hmm. We need to figure out who on the ship is messaging us. I feel like there's definitely one or two people. I think Justin is one of them. He did message one time and he said, this is Justin. Justin, which one? Um, Are you referring to a message? Data. Video yeah. engineering. Oh. I feel like this one. No, he's the data engineer. Data engineer. How often do you encounter man-made objects in your dives? I think it really depends on the place, but... Um, yeah, maybe... Not every dive we haven't seen man-made things. Um, maybe half our dives on this expedition, and, yeah. and relatively few, like we've seen like a can or a piece of fishing line. So a pretty low density of uh, debris, man-made debris compared to a lot of other places, which has been nice to see. Yeah, and I think a, a big part of the reason why we're not seeing so much trash at the bottom of the ocean here is because this area has been set aside as a protected area. Um, um, Papahana Mokoke Marine National Monument um, was recently Bridge, expanded. This is Nav. I hear there's a lot of, where are some places that do have a lot of trash? Where are those places? Outside of California? Yeah, a lot of, um, and there's some like topographic features that will concentrate trash, like submarine canyons sometimes can be just like a channel where all the trash sort of mm. aggregates. So we come up with a lot of, in the canyons I've worked in, there's a lot of like fishing gear concentrated in there. Mm. That's hard. Yeah, no, it sucks. Got to stand up and stretch the limbs. Does lighting interfere with a scheduled dive? Lightning. I don't. The weather does play a really big factor in whether or not we can dive, but I don't know if. I think it says lighting. Oh, I, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I read it like that too. <laughs> I, I first saw lightning and then I was like, lightning? When you said lightning, my brain like saw it. It was crazy. Power of suggestion. Okay, can you answer this question for me? <laughs> Does lighting interfere with a scheduled dive? No, we've been launching at night, launching during the day. Mm -hmm. Teams well equipped to do both. Yeah, um, the lights we have on the vehicles do a great job at illuminating um, and lighting everywhere we need to see. At nighttime, when the vehicles come back up, we try to turn off the lights because it can it can tend to blind those who are on deck and make it hard to see the vehicles when they're being blasted in the eyes with light. Mm -hmm. So we're at 500 meters now. Thank you, 500 meters. Paul, I think they figured out your googly eye technique pretty quick. Yeah? Yes. What's, what's the internet saying? Drill holes in it. That's about it. That's <laughs> the first <laughs> comment. That was part of it. 
Um, oh, I didn't know there was more. Did you put oil in it and reseal it? No, that that would have been too much work and uh, <laughs> proper engineering, but too much work. Well, we do the oil when we have electronics. So, um, I mean, seawater is a great uh, incompressible fluid. It's just conductive. So that's true. Um, yeah, kind of the two the two things we had to think about were materials. So most googly eyes have a little cardboard backing, which uh, <laughs> I didn't trust underwater. So mm. we basically had to. Uh, cut that off and attach our own plastic backing. Um, for that, then, we had to think about how to attach those. Uh, we use some epoxy, which generally does pretty well, but when mixing that epoxy, um, we do know, introduce Connor? little bubbles. Can and you know, uh, Was also wondering how that epoxy would, if it would flex or um, be happy under the hydrostatic stress. And then the other piece, right, was uh, you can't have an air pocket or else it would just uh, collapse. Um, so yeah, exactly, drilling holes to basically let the water fill it and then you only have that hydrostatic stress on the plastic, so. Right. Okay, we have a question for you, Val. Mm. Val, uh, what's the oldest rock you have dated so far? Could it be one of these, mm. perhaps? Could it be? <laughs> Actually, I know it's not. She's told me about some crazy old <laughs> things she's seen. She might be out of the lounge now. She might be. Well, if she left, then I'm so sorry. We cannot answer that question right now. Or maybe, Ryan, you said you had a discussion with her. Do you remember it at all? At all? <laughs> I think I remember her talking about uh, some rocks she's cut that indicated stuff from early Earth evolution, so billions of years. Oh my gosh. A couple billion. But I could totally be imagining that conversation. Mm hmm. I know sometimes things that are dreams mush into what could be reality out here sometimes. It's also just been a lot of conversation over the last few weeks. Definitely. Rock related. Plenty of conversations. I believe the Chana Cops with boots mm. um, may or may not be posted within the next couple of days. With y boots. With boots, yeah. <laughs> I don't know which Chana Cops that is. And then as we continue to ascend, um, the conversations will probably come to an end so that we can leave the air open for the um, ROV pilots and those who are on deck to um, make sure they can communicate um, as they need. And um, we'll slowly be becoming quieter and quieter. And if, I, if we miss the part where we say thank you for tuning in, and we hope to see you guys on our next uh, expedition, and we enjoy all your comments. Thank you for being here with us. Uh, mahalo nui loa. When is our next dive? Um, to be determined. Got it. Yep, thank you. How much, I'm trying to look for how much meters we're at. 400, we still got a little bit of ways away, yeah? Yeah. Twenty five minutes, thirty minutes, something like that. Fiona, what's been your favorite um sea creature that we've been able to watch over the past weeks? Who was it, Mark? I haven't really had much yeah. thought about that. Um I know what Epo's one is, I think. That chicken. Oh. Yeah. Chicken head. Good, Headless good choice. chicken. Headless chicken. That's up there for me, too. What about in the lab? What's your favorite thing you've seen? Mm. That oh. Um. <laughs> Not much thought about that, too. I've been working a lot with the eDNA. Uh. Oh, then 
Maybe you could speak to what your favorite eDNA process has been. <laughs> which, fil which one did you like filtering the most? <laughs> <laughs> maybe 137. <laughs> um, maybe like some of the corals that came up. I was really impressed about how that, uh, was it a sea pen that you guys slurped or something? Yeah, yeah, that mm. was a good yeah. one. I, I was impressed about how intact that was. Hello, Diane. Hi. What's the largest fish found in that area? In this area? In this area. We definitely, like the largest fish we saw was the... <laughs> oil fish that we saw today? No? The whale shark. Oh. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was not even thinking about no, that. No, I wasn't going with that. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> What's your favorite species, Molinai? Yeah. Ooh, definitely the crinoid is at the top. Think so? And then, like, I just like saying the word hemichorallium, <laughs> but I honestly kind of, I'm so sorry. Is that the, the sponge? Not the sponge. It's not a sponge. It's a, was that the bubble gum or is that a duffel It one? looks like the bubble gum. It looks like the bubble gum. It's the big bright pink. It's a type of octocoral. Yep. I, I think I really like looking at the octocorals. Mm. Do you know which one the octocorals are, <laughs> Epo? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. Most of the corals we're seeing are octocorals. Besides the black corals are hexacorals, and so are the cup corals and stony corals. The, um, the swirly one, is that an octocoral? Oh yeah, they're pretty. Yeah, that's iridogorgia. Iridogorgia? Yeah. I don't know, if Paul, if you're talking to us, I cannot hear you. I can hear him. Oh. Agreed. Roger, thank you very much. Christopher deserves an award today. Yeah, he's killing it. He's totally killing it. I feel like I'm missing out on this flannel vibe. <laughs> How you doing over there? I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite fish or sea or animal that we've come across on this expedition? Oh, that we've come across on this expedition? Mm hmm I don't know. I, I, uh, I don't think I have a fate. Well, no, nah, Victor Gorgia. I always love the color. Ooh. Good choice. Thank you for sharing, Jeff. And actually, earlier this morning, before you all got here, uh, there was a another purple, uh, what are the little ones that, that hang around on the rocks? Um, Mushroom, maybe? No, 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 the little tiny ones that, that almost look like barnacles. But Cup corals? No, smaller, smaller, smaller. They form a carpet almost. Zoanthids. Thank you. Yes. There yeah, those are cool. There was some purple zoanthids. Purple oh, zoanthids. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Cool. Thank you, Dan. Oh, already. Aside from cup corals, what's the next favorite thing you've seen on this expedition? And I have to think about that for a minute. And, and if for those of you who don't already know, his oh favorite yeah, is Cup Carl. Yeah. Just so you know, we got skunked 
on our shift because I actually had to come up early and was sitting with the four to eight watch. Uh -huh. And they were in the thick of it. Ooh. And about a half an hour before the end of their watch, it just turned into the stuff that we were seeing for the last three hours. I oh, see. Wow. I mean, just massive amounts of corals and mm. sponges. That's cool. And then, then we came on board and got to look at a lot of sediment. Roger. You see cool animals, like mobile animals, too? Not that I can remember. I feel like in general, though, um, Dwight has been saying that our highlights from our watches have been um, yeah. getting the most views. Yeah. So, yeah. Probably the next uh, highlight for me that stands out immediately was uh, watching Paul come up with a new technique to uh, grab a hold of the scoop and yeah. get um, manganese nodules. Been working good. with that scoop for quite a while, and it never occurred to anyone to grab it like that. And it's just brilliant to see uh, some innovation there. From, uh, I think that's going to be my primary sc scooping method. Yeah. Signature move. Mine too. <laughs> <laughs> The glick technique. <laughs> awesome. The EV Nautilus, I think, is uh, around 224 feet long and uh, 32 feet wide. Over the past couple years, I heard it, it grew a little bit. Oh, wow. It did. It was cool going down in the bread hold and seeing where the old length of it, and you could see the the lettering from Nautilus. Yeah, if you go if you go into the hold, the very aft hole. Did you call the, it the bread hold? The bread hold. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna stick. Oh, that's gonna stick. <laughs> um, yeah, they didn't they didn't cut the old transom off. They just added whatever three meters to the or four meters to the aft part of the ship. So they just kind of glommed it on and put mm -hmm. the deck on. But the yeah, if you now now we'll always refer to that as the bread hold. <laughs> um, yeah, you can see the old transom. What I want to know is how they got that freezer down there. True. True. That, there's the hatch underneath Argus. That's a pretty they decent size. through that hatch? There's yeah, no they, way that freezer fit through that hatch. Yeah, they tilted it and then dropped it in. Really? Yeah. You witnessed that? Was it built around the freezer? I saw the freezer. I saw <laughs> it before the freezer was in there, and I saw it after the freezer was in uh, there. It's like a ship in a bottle. Totally. Freezer in a hold. <laughs> <laughs> Squat lobster and a sponge. <laughs> okay. Um, anyone want to share their most memorable biological sighting of the expedition? Headless chicken. Yeah, that was Headless great. Headless chicken. Yeah. The uh, bubblegum coral covered in basket, basket stars. stars. I think oh. was, that was crazy. Was that on our watch? I forget. Or I might have been in the lounge. Do you watch the wind shear too, Dan? This yeah. is the. Uh yeah, looks okay. It Let made me, me nervous, and then it kind of snapped into place. Yeah, it does. See it pop. It's especially towards the flanges. Okay. I feel like for me, it was the the zoanthids that covered I'm that just rock face. About it because it's the last. Next to the last lay. Yeah. It's uh, the level one climbing for a while, and then it, it climbs, 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 and then mm. on the cable. Mm. Uh, finds its home. Apparently, we're a couple of the ones who only get a really good zoom on the polyps. <laughs> it's the same lens for every video guy. You, you should you should see the comment here. Yeah, he's he's been teaching in sign language for like the entire oh. day today. I think I'm I'm definitely over exaggerating, but um, he's 
a majority of what he's been doing today has been there. What's that? Oh, thank you. Yeah, Christopher has been, I don't know when he got up this morning, but he has been in and out of that. And then he's also been spelling you two when you go back and do one. Yeah, he's been helping us out. Yeah, so he's been... Angry. He's been running hard. I don't think he went to sleep because his watch is 12 to 4. And then he had um, interactions at 4, at 6. Yeah. So I think he's just maybe been up. Yep, Crazy. he's been up this entire time, so... He's hopping in here, joining mm -hmm. our watch. He's been... He's going to be All super tired when I have to make sure that, yeah, he's such a trooper. I'm a big fan, Christopher. You're doing a great job. If your family's listening, Christopher is doing a great you job. You could just so photobomb his, or video yeah. bomb what he's doing right now. But. <laughs> See, made you look. I don't want to distract him. <laughs> Class is going, why did that guy just turn around and look? <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever seen Nautilus or Nautiluses or have you ever seen a Nautilus before? Like that's a fish, right? Or Nautilus. Or, or is that a the mollusk? Mollusk. Mollusk. I'm gonna have to look that up. Me They're too. Cool. They have jet propulsion. There's the one down in there's a shallow one down in the lounge, isn't there? Mm. There's a what? There's a shell of one. Oh, shell of shell. one down in the lounge. Oh. Oops. Actually there might be one in the forward accommodations too. Oh, wow. They're very cool. One of my favorite animals. Wow. So cool. They can uh, adjust their buoyancy. So maybe they can surf those internal waves. Yeah. They're a good candidate. Okay. What other seamounts are Their you currently are so over, cool. over yeah. other than the Okalani Ridge seamounts? I think diametrically opposite. Uh, um, that's I diametrically know. opposite. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think we're on any other diametrically opposite seamounts. You got my shoulders shrugging over here. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, oh, hi, Ivo, yeah, Paul, and Aole, oh, yeah, mana, oh, Aole, nana. Okay, yeah, ka. That's interesting to know. I never knew Come that. Hmm. Keep an eye out when I'm out there. Mm hmm. I uh, could maintain all the way till our hark's on deck. What is our depth now? 262, 238. The Nautilus creatures are native to your area? According to the this yeah. comment, I haven't seen any myself. Yeah. That's I think so they're pretty cool. rare to see. Oh. Do they mostly live in the deep, do you know? I see now. Bridge, this is Nav. Uh, can you please secure the tanks and enable air tuggers? I know, I'm watching, watching the clock. <laughs> I 
are any of you guys in on that rowing competition that's happening in the in the gym? I have the lowest score of anyone on the board. <laughs> I only tried it once. How is it? It's really hard and like it doesn't respond that well to mm. what you're doing. Mm. But yeah, it doesn't do it every time. I like how Leela came in and was like, a standing back row. Does it completely drop the signal when that happens? I don't have a, I think, I don't know if I have a personal Twitter. To drop it out momentarily? I don't, I, mean, I think I do, but I don't use the app at all. Like it's camera, not on my phone or anything. Excuse me, and pause the uh, voltage on this below its threshold, maybe. Oh, yeah. Because we are on such a yeah. shallow seamount, I feel like some sea life might be around up at the surface, hopefully. Yeah, they can really like concentrate things above mm. them. <laughs> Someone we? thinks the googly eye needs some eyelashes. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. <laughs> We thought about it, actually. <laughs> uh, Kylie had a hair clip that broke, and we were thinking about either turning that into a m m weird mouth or, like, <laughs> eyelashes. Are we going to miss lunch? No. There's no missing lunch. That's when the next watch would come and relieve us, right? I, no, I think we handle the... Uh, Open communication with your fellow peers to make sure you don't miss lunch, because I feel like you're very concerned about that, Kotachi. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, uh, I've been skipping breakfast. Oh. So lunch is important. Mm -hmm. I did. I did the same today. Yeah, me too. Yeah, we do. Mm. But I think usually for launches and recoveries, whoever's in the van just kind of takes care of the, the whole thing. Not an interaction right now. Oh. Thank goodness. The jet wash.
Hello there, France. Um, How was? <laughs> um, for this particular expedition, the deepest we went is? 3,500 meters. 3,500 meters. And um, this dive actually is, I believe, our shallowest dive that we've done thus far at 725 meters? Yeah, I think that's what we got up to. So I do expect we're going to come up with two positive wraps. Um, I'm sure they can handle it on deck, but we might, I mean, if we should tell them. Fishy. It looks like there's two fishes in the Herc view, too. Two. I mean, Argus. Because we have plus a half now, and we zeroed at plus one and a half. But we had two negative wraps, I think, so. That's what I was kind of trying to say, is that we had, we zeroed at plus one and a half, so. Yeah, yeah. 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 They know. Cool. Oh, look at that. Little school of fish. I'm going to turn off my thruster as well. Shouldn't need it. That's such a pretty view. Nice. I like that view. To do the auto, you just tap it. Mm. How are you doing, Val? Oh, she's not plugged in yet. Hold on. Hi, Val. Hey, Mel and I, what's up? Welcome to King George and the Coral Hunters Watch. Ah. Did we either get, get around to introducing ourselves on this watch yet? No, not today. Mm. If you don't know who we are by now, everyone knows <laughs> us by now. I think so. <laughs> How's the rocks coming along? Rocky. <laughs> I, I was able to process uh. a bunch of them yesterday and uh, uh, we should be on track to get most of that finished uh, today and tomorrow. Awesome. Nice. Yeah. So, just have to finalize some reports for those and get everything uh, uploaded once it's all cut, inspected, described, subsampled, mm. Mm. dried, bagged, boxed. <laughs> <laughs> We're uh, almost at five zero meters, so I'm just going to come off SPL. Okay. Um, Thank you, Paul. Yep. Thanks, Paul. Yep, final stages of blue water. Just tried to see if anybody up here wanted lunch, but we all decided yeah, to hang out. <laughs> <laughs> How could we miss no. this? Right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. How about you, Mark? Koi ho, everyone. Bye. Thank you, Ipo. See you next time. Thank you. See you later, Ipo. You too. Um, Ipo's off to do protocol, and I'm going to go join her. Yep. Um, go ahead. Aloha. Are we good to continue up? Uh, two reps on the tether. Bridge, main deck, reader, check. Deck, bridge, loud and clear.
Did it continue? Bridges go for, oh, for weird, uh, uh, recovery. Adelana and Hercon. So it's coming up. Back off SPL. Earn dog downstairs to go put on some steel toes and. Uh, Do you want the ship to reduce blocks. speed? Okay. Is it a mad dash to saw through them okay. before the transit, sort of? Um, no, I think we'll be able to finish up all the all the sawing today. Oh, great. Yeah. Get that part of the deck cleaned up yeah. completely. <laughs> <laughs> there is uh, rock dust all over the place. Yeah. Could you use like a shroud thing similar to what Beth has for the micro for Actually, that? Actually, Beth donated her shroud. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, we're trying to figure out ways to uh, engineer, you know, how to cut down how much of a mess we make uh, from the spray that goes uh, out behind the saw. Mm -hmm. We haven't quite gotten it perfect yet, but we have some ideas for some more adjustments to that. Try to nice. seal it a little bit and keep it contained to the sink that uh, the saw is mounted over. Hey, Justin. The plywood contraption. Welcome. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so that was a nice end of the dive. Came in we for the last. We made it up to the top. Yeah. Yeah. Got pretty far. 720 something meters. Something like that, yeah. Grab a couple rocks last minute for you. Yeah, thanks for doing that. Of course. Yeah, I wasn't quite sure what to expect up there, whether or not we were going to see, you know, an obvious carbonate cap or anything, but those still look kind of igneous up there. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if that was some sort of a submarine platform. And then, uh, yeah, all sorts of fish, too. Does that give you any hints as to whether it was exposed to air at one, one time? Possibly. Um, yeah, if it were shallower... Um, or even uh, subaerial at some point, just above sea level. I would expect to see like some terrestrial weathering, probably uh, probably some coral growth if it yeah. were a uh, uh, shallow, uh, you know, uh, shallow submarine. But um, yeah, I guess we'll see what those rocks look like. Yeah, so they are volcanic. Uh, it just may not uh, that part of the platform potentially, you know, wasn't it in any sort of uh, shallow coral growth zone. Yeah. Which could be interesting. My hopes were up this morning when I saw all the coral rubble that we were going to come across a oh, yeah. big field of living stuff, but just I a few scattered stony corals here and there. Yeah, I guess I was expecting more of that too. Yeah. You didn't see any debris on that, did you, this time around? Uh, like uh, mar uh, marine debris. Like man-made debris? Yeah. Uh, don't think we did. Good. Yeah. Stop Meza. He's stopping Meza. Okay. Mm. All right. I guess we're in the last 20 meters. I'm going to probably let the front row focus. Sure. Yeah. Yep. I think I'm going to go ahead downstairs and uh, get ready to bring some rocks in. All right. So. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Yep. Signing off for now. Aloha, everyone. Dan, once Atalanta's on deck, do you want to increase the speed of the ship? Okay. Copy.
is Control. Please hold position. Control, bridge. Hold position. Copy. This is Control. Please reduce thrust on the jet pump. Control bridge, okay. We're going to reduce uh, to 50%, 5-0. Copy. Control van bridge. Go ahead. Yeah, once I see her coming into the wash, I'll, I'll reduce again. Copy. Can you guys see a wrap? All the way to the vehicle. I don't see a wrap yet. Okay, we'll pull it up a little bit and have a look. So we are recovering our vehicles right now. Looks like Atalanta is on deck. Getting ready to bring Hercules in with the crane. For a viewer in Sydney uh, who's, who's curious about ship life, uh, we are trying to put more things on our Instagram. I think one went up a day or two ago. Um, 
So keep watching our social media. Do keep in mind that a lot of folks on board wear several different hats. So we don't all, uh, we don't have like a dedicated single person for social media. We have uh, a team that works together and tries to get that all together. We get a lot of video and a lot of uh, images in addition to our samples that need to get processed and sorted. It takes quite a while. We try to get some new content up as frequently as possible.